everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today on our Kubernetes masterclass. Um, it's Wednesday, May 20th. We have a great class lined up today. Um, just going to give it a few minutes for everybody to get logged on. I know with uh, all these virtual events going on, there's a lot of different platforms. So um, some people might need a couple extra minutes to get it downloaded and situated on their systems. Uh, in addition to that, um, we just ask for your patience if anything, uh, if we run into any technical difficulties, um, you know, with everybody being on uh, in their homes, you know, sometimes um, slides not let load properly or anything. So we appreciate your patience if any of that does happen. So um, today's topic is Windows Kubernetes cluster support in Rancher 2.4. And let me next slide here. Uh, my name's Connie Lin. I am the manager of global events here at Rancher. Um, so I'll be your host today. And our speaker today is staff software engineer, Luther Monson. Uh, Luther, you wanna say hello? Hey everybody. Hey, hey. And we will also have um, one of our software engineers to help out with uh, the Q&A for this session. And a couple of housekeeping items for um, our webinar today. It will probably run between 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, we've got a great presentation and demo and then uh, followed by Q&A. If you have any questions along the way, feel free to pop them into the questions tab in your GoToWebinar panel. And, um, you know, we will try our best to answer them along the way, but uh, we'll do an official Q&A at the end of the session today. So hope to get to all of the questions. Also, this session, as all of our master classes are being recorded, and the recording along with the slides will be available um, and shared with you guys in an email after the session today. If you haven't already, um, go head on over to slack.rancher.io to join uh, the Rancher's users Slack channel. We have a masterclass channel there where uh, you can ask questions there as well. Uh, so feel free to check that out. And just a quick update on our next online trainings and master classes. So we do have a training, I believe, tomorrow for an intro to Kubernetes and Rancher. And um, next week, we do not have any master classes uh, due to the Memorial Day holiday. And we pick these up back again the following week on Tuesday, June 2nd. So head over to rancher.com slash training to check out all upcoming sessions. And with that, I think we can go ahead and dive into our topic today. I'm going to hand this over to you, Luther, and you can go ahead and share your screen. Thank you, Connie. So um, the class today is going to be on hybrid OS clusters. Um, I'm going to go at this from the perspective of you knowing a little bit about Rancher um, and a little bit about Linux. And I'm going to assume that some of the Windows stuff might not be your forte. Um, but we will go over plenty of details. My demo is pretty thorough. Um, but let's start with some slides because I would like to get you guys an overview of where we are today, how things are going with Rancher and Windows, um, and how it's gonna go in the near future. Um, we have some updates coming, and I'll okay, go over Luther? all of those. Yes, ma'am. Um, okay, I was just gonna say, I wasn't sure if you were sharing anything, but now I no. can see your slides. <clears throat> yeah, I just added that. So, Great. first off, title slide, I already covered that. So then I'm gonna do an overview. I'm gonna talk a little bit about Windows and RKE, kind of how that works, um, the, the architecture, so to speak. Uh, there's also now, I think most people who are doing Windows are gonna understand that there's 1909 and 2004 uh, pending. Um, 
I think that's going to be interesting for people who are currently in a situation that we are, which is how do you keep your stuff updated? So everybody probably understands now that there's a matrix of compatibility we have to deal with. Um, that one should be pretty good. And then I'll do a full demo. Um, the demo is going to also uh, kind of show you um, if you're not a .NET developer, I'm not, so don't make fun of my .NET code, but uh, basically uh, I have a .NET developer working on their local workstation, which is what I'm doing right now, um, and then kind of how you get that all the way up into um, a Kubernetes cluster. So it actually should be pretty comprehensive. And then, as always, questions. I also really want questions from you guys um, throughout most of this. Um, I uh, very much um, uh, should be interrupted. And if there's something that doesn't make sense, let's make sure we cover it now. Uh, Okay, so um, a hybrid OS cluster, what does this actually mean? So this is basically the idea that we've had since Rancher 2.3 that will support a Windows worker node. So the Windows um, clusters uh, essentially boil down to a Windows only worker node. And I will discuss that a little bit more. Um, the only supported option in Rancher uh, is via the custom RKE cluster. Uh, I will show you that in the UI later, but the idea is, is you have to boot the nodes yourself and then run our agent command on each one, and then they'll, they'll work through uh, and join the cluster and, and talk back to Rancher after that. Uh, we do not have an infrastructure provider for these right now. Uh, we'd like to, but uh, at, at present we don't have one. The uh, infrastructure provider um, providers would be something like the vSphere, the AWS provider, things like this, where you can present uh, your cloud credentials and, and you can boot clusters in those infrastructures um, dynamically, and the whole cluster comes up. We do not have that right now. For Windows, you'd have to boot the nodes individually, uh, run the agent commands, uh, and then they'll join back. And I will actually do a full walkthrough of how that is. It's it's not even that hard. So. <clears throat> the trick with Linux uh, is you have to have etcd, control plane, and one worker node. If you have this, essentially you run the control plane and etcd in Linux. Uh, the one worker node just kind of helps. It's nice to have it around. Um, I will show you why I have that for my demo. Um, it's also required. You have to have one worker node sitting around. Um, the etcd and control plane, uh, the part about those is that uh, they do not actually today compile and run in native, uh, native Windows. So you have to have that stuff running on Linux boxes. All that Go code currently still only runs uh, in, in Linux. However, there is Flannel. Flannel lets you talk and has these. Uh, it has a Windows node talk back to the Linux nodes. Uh, it sets up all the networking properly because Flannel does fully support um, Windows. And then, um, if you have the Windows node, Docker EE, that's pretty much all you're going to end up needing. Uh, you will. Uh, Again, demo will show a lot of this, but the, you have Docker running on a Windows 2019 server. Um, you choose a custom cluster, choose a final support, make sure you have an additional Linux box around. Uh, in my demo, I have an Ubuntu box that does the etcd control plane and then worker node. And then I add the Windows node and I have a hybrid cluster. So what is actually supported today? What's going on? Um, I think most people who understand Rancher understand RKE. It's our Rancher's Kubernetes engine. It's a CLI tool that's also embedded within Rancher. Um, it also is embedded uh, deep into our agent. Our agent that runs inside of your Kubernetes cluster um, runs RKE commands, essentially. Uh, we pass down cluster YAMLs to the agent. The agent then makes sure everybody inside the, inside the cluster is up to date doing what they're supposed to. Um, so to get Windows working, we had to get the agent running in Windows Server uh, 1809 and 1903. That was our first launch that we had of this. And um, we had the same compatibility issues that most people have, which is how do you make sure uh, you have the, um, the servers around to even build them because uh, the host has to match the container version. So if someone is running an 1809 cluster, they also, sorry, an 1809 Windows server, they additionally have to run 1809 uh, Windows container. So there is a compatibility issue that has been going on in Windows since this stuff was released. Um, they're getting better and there is some talk about them possibly removing this, uh, but it's, it's not finalized yet. And even up into 2004, which should be launching shortly, um, uh, that's, that's still a thing. So as of today, RKE, uh, we support 1809, 1903. The other thing that's really tricky, and I've actually had to deal with support on some of this, is that you have to have 
uh, Docker manifests supported inside of the registry that you use. Um, it's it, if you do not, there's a lot of workarounds you're going to have to do to, to bypass that. The big one that came up recently was ECR. ECR did not have um, manifests. We had a customer who was trying to use that with Windows, and it failed miserably. Um, a way around that, which worked for the customer, was to precede the images locally. Uh, it works out, but it's just a lot more headache. If you have a Docker manifest supported registry, uh, this will be a lot easier for you. Obviously, Docker Hub does that today. That's the demo that I'll be showing with you. Um, also, just the registry two container. If you boot that up, you can go ahead and hide yourself a working manifest uh, uh, repository pretty quickly. Um, here's how I pre-pull images on Windows Notes. This is actually um, pretty useful. Every release that we have of Rancher comes with a rancher's images.txt and that rancher images.txt uh, contains all the images there's a specific windows one by the way and a specific linux one but they're, they're different you have to get that if you want to pre-pull images for for rke to have everything available locally i think anybody who's done containers in windows understands that the size of those containers are kind of big um you, you're just not like a linux world where you have an alpine container that's all of 25 megabytes and super slim to pull down nice and gzip comes in and, and expands is good to go some of these things are gigabytes um you uh, if you have a server core image with a lot of stuff in it you can have a very 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 large image so pre-populating is useful um this is a kind of a simple way to do it I did this for my demo here because when I boot up when I boot up a node and having him uh, the first thing the agent does is actually this exact same command right and I didn't want to have you guys wait here while I was downloading gigabytes worth of stuff very useful if you can let's say boot up Windows node pre pull the images for the version of Kubernetes that you want to run and then uh, you can bake off uh, an image of that a template or an AMI or whatever it is whatever systems you're using um, if that's all pre baked into there um, your node will come up a lot faster. The Rancher agent. So RKE runs through the Rancher agent. Um, I will show a quick example of how that of how that happens. Um, but I think uh, if you have run a RKE node before, you understand. Actually, if you run any of our Rancher in general, the agent is kind of key to what we do. We have the downstream agent that talks back to our our, our management plane. Um, and RKE runs through the agent. That's that's the gist of it. Um, we also on Windows have this thing called Rancher Wins. Um, Rancher Wins is a, is a little bit of a shim that we have to get um, the container, the, the, the Cuba containers, et cetera, to talk back to the, the Windows host. So that little daemon sits on the box. Um, we we kind of take care of it for you. It's not that big of a deal. Just want to make sure I identify that there is another project that we have lying around called Rancher Wins, which does some extra management work for us. Okay, so 1909 and 2004. Um, I think that this is going to be very useful to anybody who is currently in the situation of needing to upgrade. I'll tell you exactly the process that I've gone through the last month to figure out how we're going to upgrade our existing rancher stuff. Um, and then uh, that might hopefully apply to your organization. Uh, we have uh, kind of a, of a pretty insane build process for how we do things. Um, but I, if we kind of hyper-focus on the Windows piece, it's actually not that bad. Um, so I'll go through a couple of things here. The Windows compatibility matrix is uh, a thing that Windows maintains, uh, uh, that Microsoft maintains, which is a, a kind of a list of kind of what container support is within each, um, each version of Windows. So I think the most critical piece that I think that you have to understand is you need to build the container on the version of windows and for us that means this so when we went through and inventoried this uh, to kind of update uh, our build process for 1999 and 2004 um, these are the things that we kind of identified as what needs to be done kind of our dependencies before even potentially going to 1909 let's say 1909 is released today so i'll focus on 1909 2004 should be soon and by release, I mean the specific images, the um, the baseline server core, PowerShell, uh, nano core, I mean, all these little guys, nano server and um, uh, the ASP.NET ones. So uh, those guys those guys have to be released with full support from Microsoft and up into Azure, into their MCR repo. Um, if that stuff's all good to go, that's our first dependency that we have because you cannot build a 1909 image without the original server core images available. You need to have those to start this whole process. So 1909 exists today. So I'll talk about that more. The drone Docker plugin 
Um, we use drone. You might use something else. I'm just going to tell you what we use. Drone, um, in order for us to have our build pipelines work in 1909, we have to have 1909 containers of drone plugins. So we usually uh, tend to submit back PRs to those guys um, and they update that and they add their own build servers to make those containers. Um, you could build them yourself if you're motivated, but we like to keep things um, back into the drone, the drone setup. So um, I actually did the 1909 uh, update myself. Um, they recently merged it and did the upgrade. We now have containers for it and we've moved on in our process and this dependency list. So the next part is the Rancher build servers. We actually also need our 1909 servers. We have those now. Um, and the final piece is the drone YAML updates. Um, and at this point for us, it's gonna end up being a copy and paste and changing your tags to the latest versions of uh, server core essentially. That should hopefully be your pipeline as well. So when you get into a process of having to do this upgrade, if, if you can follow this kind of four, four step process, um, you probably be in a, in a much better situation. What you do not want is you do not want to be building by hand and, and, and pushing up containers. Uh, and and uh, you want to kind of have this thing a little bit more tighter than that. The, I, I, they tend to release this now every, what, eight to nine months. Uh, we we found we did some of this by hand initially and the upgrade process that I just pulled um, here uh, recently uh, is helping us get away from that because we were unable to hit 1909 when it first released. Um, we didn't have time to get to it. Um, so we got behind and it was something that we were, were told about and we finally got around to getting our whole process updated so we can then support 2004 when it comes out uh, shortly. Okay, so I'm going to do a demo. Um, I hope all of that kind of makes sense uh, for where we are today with Windows. Um, if there are questions, I do not see any popping up, uh, more than willing to answer them. Uh, but I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to also... Just a second before we proceed. Um, there is one question around Docker installation for Windows machines. Um, like, which kind of installation do we prefer, virtual or not virtual? I don't really understand the question, but probably you have an idea about it. Um, okay, yeah, sorry, I thought I muted myself. Um, okay, so I don't honestly know that question. Um, what I do know is that the installation that we do comes straight off of the Docker EE installation uh, page, um, which is uh, right on the Docker Docker.com, Docker out, whatever it is. Um, so it's a very very simple, just uh, you know, import module or whatever that whatever that thing is. Um, I don't know that question to be honest, answer, honest with you. So, um, so if I'm correct, uh, we just prefer the Docker for Windows. Um, the standard doc, the standard steps that documentation is there on Docker Docs. Yeah, yeah, and then in my link here, um, uh, well, when you later get my, uh, when you get my slides, uh, there's a link there for the Docker installation process. But it's essentially Docker.com and Docker EE. I'll actually just open it and show people. This is probably interesting for people uh screen share this one okay so this is the windows docker ee so in windows 2019 server you have to have the enterprise version if you are booting the server and paying for it via a cloud provider um you're already paying for docker ee windows just gives it to you it's part of their azure deploy process you can just type in this right here install module that's pretty much it so the question was is do we do terminal or not terminal um uh, sorry virtual, virtual or not virtual, or not virtual? I yeah know. i don't even see anything about virtual or not in here so yeah, i guess yeah, I, may, may not. I think these dogs are pretty exhaustive so that should be they helpful. are yeah the and and there are also is in fact uh, in in amazon for instance there are they have amis that come with uh, docker pre-installed you don't even have to bother with this part so um i think it's like with container support is what they call it uh, it's actually super easy you can just boot that ami and you're ready to go that's that's it's pretty trivial it's kind of how most of our testers get stuff done um i don't i don't see that as even honestly you shouldn't even concern yourself with that question i think some of that work's already been done for you it would probably make life a lot easier if you just use something that's already pre-baked Cool. Um, thank you. And there's another question, which is, um, does Windows Kubernetes cluster support persistent volumes? So, so far, it seems like CSI support for Windows is in alpha right now. Do we have any support for that currently? I'm pretty sure that stuff works. Um, I do know that there's a lot of work that goes into it, and if I have seen patches coming for things like this. Uh, so I don't honestly do a lot of stuff with uh, persistent volumes. It's not really my expertise. I mostly 
code and make these things stand up and things like this. So I don't actually run uh, a lot of precision volumes. I don't need a database, for instance, that needs to stick around for a long time. So uh, sorry, not my expertise area. Um, potentially potentially a, a good question for maybe a, maybe an engineer who works on Longhorn. Um, sorry, I, I'm pretty sure this stuff all works though, from my understanding. That's fine, thank you. Um, you can go ahead, there are no other questions right now. Okay, all right, well, let's take a look at what this actually is. So I am gonna show you, I'm sharing this right now, so I'm just gonna show you the Rancher UI really quickly. Um, I have two clusters here, one is an Ubuntu cluster, I open him up you will see that i just have a typical linux cluster this is a you know ubuntu one server uh with all the roles uh very typical if i go here this is cluster one this is a windows hybrid so if you see here i have windows here 175 1935 linux sorry docker on windows this one here is on uh, Linux. So this is my master. He is also, as you can tell, all roles. So this means he is the etcd, the control plane, and the worker node. So he he will he will suffice for having my one single worker that I need, and then the additional worker node right here. So how did I even make this? I will show you. It's actually ridiculously easy. So I have a couple of things here in the background that you don't know about, but I will show you because I have vSphere open. This is cluster one. I have the Windows node, I have the Ubuntu node, I have cluster two. So we will add cluster two as a hybrid cluster right now, and I'll show you how simple it is. Um, go here, add a cluster. So first off, you need to do custom, as I was discussing during the slides. Give it a name, cluster two. Um, I will go down here, 175 is okay, 1175, sorry. Flannel is the only supported Windows setup, and you'll see here Windows support enabled. Um, I generally choose VXLAN. I like it a little bit more, uh, but that's up to you. Um, and then uh, that's pretty much it. At this point, I have enough to tell Rancher what this is going to look like. And you click next, and you will see this. This is the custom node. Um, creation process. Uh, we have here a Docker run command, and you'll see very simply it is a rancher agent. We boot the rancher agent. We tell him where his home is. His home is this uh, rancher server here. You can see it matches up with the IP address up here. Um, and then we have a token. Token is going to be the secure way to have a conversation. And then uh, we additionally have these three flags, and you can see if I uncheck these, you know, they adds the additional flags to the agent to tell uh, RKE what type of cluster this is. So what I'm looking at right here is uh, the command for the Linux node. This is the Windows node right here. If you notice, uh, there is no option for etcd and control plane, like I discussed, only the worker. And you'll see here we have the same similar command, PowerShell, however, this time passed to uh, invoke. Uh, and you'll see here it's got worker, it's got the same token and the same uh, image. Um, this is the critical piece about me telling you that you need to have a registry that supports manifests because as you see this is the exact same image. Um, this is a manifest that will point to um, the so when you pass in a request from a Linux node it'll if, it'll return the Linux container. If you pass in from a Windows node right here it'll it'll ask for the Windows uh, server version. And it additionally will go all the way down to the 1809 versus the 1903 versus the 1903. It'll does, it does it all for you right away. Um, it's uh, it's pretty useful. Manifests are a pretty nice little feature and Rancher relies on them heavily. So um, this is a custom cluster. I'm going to make my master node here. Um, I am going to switch to an SSH session if I can find it. And I will switch to showing that because this isn't that hard, but I do want to let you guys watch the whole process. Um, I also need to make sure I have the right IP for the right node. So I need my Windows Ubuntu 2. Let's see if this is it. Uh, I don't think he is. I will just go pick SSH2, SSH2 Ubuntu at this guy. 
Cool. Um, Luther, your screen sharing just stopped. I'm not able to see anything right now. Um, let me stop. Oh, yeah, it actually says it stopped. How about that? Can you see now? Um, not really. I don't see um, anything, Luther. Let me share the whole screen. Let me stop and restart. How is that? Yep, there, yep, there it is. All right, sorry about that. No uh, all right, so this is the node that I have. Um, essentially, there, uh, this is actually pretty trivial. If you boot up, um, so this is a, this is vSphere. All I did was I booted the Ubuntu OVA, 18.04 OVA, um, and uh, installed Docker, and installing Docker. Let me confirm I did that on this one. I need to sudo Docker PS. Cool, I did. But uh, installing Docker is it's really just the get docker.com script. Not too complicated. That's all I did. Um, I, however, do not need to run it a second time. Did my screen share go away? No, it's still up. All right. Okay, so this is a node with Docker installed on it, and I am going to add him as our master. Um, and I am going to be tapping back to the Rancher UI and grabbing that command, which will look like that. And there we go. Um, so, Luther, it's gone again. So did you share the screen where you are getting the agent command from? I have a feeling that this does not, but I did not share the screen where I was getting the command from. I was just oh, okay. saying that okay. I was doing it so that I have to reshare. I'm, I'm in order for this thing to be more visible. I'm trying to sh just share the specific window. Sorry, everybody. In okay. advance. All right. So as you'll see, uh, he went out and downloaded the Rancher agent and we'll do a Docker PS. I can so even now we are still on the presentation screen, not the terminal. I fantastic. It's worked so well. Can you see my whole screen? Yes. Okay. Well, let's do that for a little bit. I'll make this bigger. Um, okay. So you'll see here that I have a Docker PS uh, watch running um, and now stuff is coming up. So essentially I ran that Docker agent run command. We now have stuff coming up. I'm going to do a Docker logs. Oops, Docker PS. What was the... All right, Docker logs. All right, so this is the agent running. Now we can additionally, can you still see this? Hopefully big enough. You'll see here that we have this node. He is registering um, and he's pulling images. This is what this is doing in the background. And you'll eventually start seeing some more containers boot up. In the meantime, we'll let that guy go. And I'm gonna go edit and grab my Windows worker. So I'm going to again, again confirm I have the right machine. So it's gonna be this one, 254. Nope, that's an old one. I will go here, 254. Okay, so this additionally uh, is a Windows box that was just had the Docker EE installation on it. Nothing more complicated. You'll see here if I do a Docker PS, nothing is running. Um, and I have a command that will hopefully copy and paste if RDP lets me. Cool. Let's go try that again. All right. So um, this will do very similar, except the difference on this node right now. And by very similar, I mean very similar to what the Linux node does. The difference is going to be that the, there it goes. The Windows node has all of the images already pulled. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. And this should hopefully come up a lot faster. There we go. Agent is now running. Docker PS. There he is. And images. So you'll see here I have hypercubes, arcade tools. All this stuff is already pre pulled. So this node should hopefully come up pretty fast. Oh, of course I did. Uh, 6B. 
there you go. So he's now currently in process of, yep. So um, I'll tell you what's happening right now is this thing is waiting for etcd and the control plane to all provision and be happy and nice. And then when there's an etcd and control plane, that means the Windows node will officially be able to communicate back to the cluster. So let's switch back here, see how he's doing. Great, he's starting to boot things. You can see here we have Rancher Hypercube 117.5. And we have QB API server, we have etcd booted. We still have our agent running. This is probably gonna come up in, in no time here. But he's waiting for the API to be ready. But that's pretty much it. Not really much more you need to do to create a, a quick Windows cluster. If anybody has any questions about this process, I will in fact be moving on very shortly once this cluster comes up. Um, so no questions around the installation, but there's another question around um, alternatives to Docker drone. So you mentioned that there are potential alternatives that can be used in the architecture. Um, do you know of any such alternatives? Yeah, so we use drone to do all our automation and we build all of our um, Windows agents via drone and we build our manifests via drone. So um, yeah, I mean, that whole process is pretty automated for us. It's just uh, for us to, to get new versions in, we need to bump, we need to, we need to bump the versions of the things that we rely on, server core, et cetera. Um, but uh, we, we rely heavily on the um, drone Docker plugin. Um, and that plugin was a dependency that I listed as something that needed to be updated uh, to have a specific server core version. Um, we, we, we tend to fork that and commit it back. I hope that answers the question. Um, so are there any alternatives to using drone? Any alternatives? Yeah. Oh, um, man, that's a good question. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, any of these CI CD pipelines, if, if you can boot, if you can, if they can give you a host and you have Docker installed on it, then, and, and you can run Docker commands against it, then uh, yeah, you should be able to do it. Um, I, I don't know how well supported the Windows world is. I, I do know that um, I do know that Drone had it pretty quick. Uh, I'm not sure if everybody else, if the GitLab or other people are doing that too. I, I'm sorry, I don't know. No worries. Um, and about the installation, uh, is there a list of documentation of all the images that we need to pre-pull? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, that is found here. So if you go to the Rancher Rancher GitHub repo um, and you go to our releases section, this is uh, right here, so this is 243, this is the version that I'm on. Every release we have this giant dump of assets uh, and you're gonna want the images, load images, rancher images, windows images, this one right here. So essentially I downloaded this, I, I mean, not much harder than just copying this link address and then doing a IWR and pulled it in. And then I ran that for each across it and put all the images in. Cool. Um, and is there any minimum Kubernetes version that is required for running Windows? Uh, it's actually the Rancher. Rancher had to get updates for it. Um, I believe that the, the everything that's in our KE today, 115, 116, 117, that we have are all all, all supporting it. Um, I So yeah, I guess your question was, was there a minimum? Uh, technically, mm -hmm. our, our stuff works with 115 plus. Got it. Um, and there's another question around, um, do you need our Docker overlay network on Windows for the inter-cluster communication? Oh, there's the other two, the layer two bridge if you want. Um, you don't need it. I find it easier personally. Um, if you don't like it, then that's, I guess there's this option too, which is, um, oops, not that one, cancel, cluster, is that it? There it goes. So there's also the layer two bridge from Windows Gateway. Those are the only two options that Flannel currently supports. Got it. So we need to pick one of them for Windows. You do. Um, I do see most people using VXLAN, but uh, if you feel like you want to use the L2 bridge, uh, go ahead. Cool. Um, that's all the questions for the installation process. Sure. So um, this cluster is coming up. So you'll notice now that we have nodes um, and we have 
So this, this is the tricky part. I'm going to identify it right now. You're going to see me use it very soon. This is a, this is a taint. This is a taint that we have uh, that we're using right now in our KE. Um, the idea here, you can see it's cattle.io slash OS. Since it's cattle.io, that's what we added. Um, and it's a taint that we specifically set up so you don't accidentally run Windows containers on Linux nodes. So why am I bringing this up? Um, if you only want to run Windows containers, Great, should be super easy. You should be able to you know, run your deployments really easily because the default when we set this up will be to always run on the Windows nodes. Um, this is a problem, however, with the demo I'm about to show you. The problem is, is that I am going to be showing you how to use that Linux worker with the flannel network and connect a .NET application to a Linux service. So this is critical because you will not be able to um, schedule the node unless you properly set up your taints and tolerations, sorry, your tolerations because of the taint. Uh, and we also need to make sure we target the Linux node. I will show you how we do that. It's not that hard, um, but it's very critical that you understand that we did that. We did it on purpose. We did it on purpose uh, so that you don't accidentally run the Windows container on the Linux node. Um, and to use it, it's not that hard. And we'll see that right now in action. Um, take a look here. You'll see that this guy's super healthy. We got kubelets, we got schedulers, all sorts of great stuff. Um, so he's happy. Uh, we have a Linux master and we have a Windows worker. Now, let me show you what I've created. And it's also kind of fun. Um, just uh, this might be more for a developer. Um, but I do know if anybody is more in the uh, DevOps uh, sysadmin world, uh, this may be useful for you to have some uh, sort of firsthand knowledge on, on what you would do with your application to make it run inside of a Kubernetes cluster. Um, this is one way, there's obviously tons. Um, the way I'm about to show you uh, is using environment variables. Um, this is pretty, pretty key to what a lot of people are doing in Kubernetes. Uh, we actually even have, um, uh, it's by the UI here, I'll show you, um, you can actually set all of these things and I'll, when, I, when I actually deploy my application um, you'll see how I do that it's actually pretty cool so that right here if hopefully you guys can see my very terrible .NET code um, right here environment variable I have one here called sleep and then if I go to my redis connector I have another one here environment variable and I call it redis so if you were running a .NET application locally, this console app here. So here I am in, in, in Rider, and I want to be able to run this locally and see what it does. So how would you do that? This is how we do this with most of our applications that are in Go. Just environment variables right here. I can say Redis is my local host, 6379, and I want my sleep to be 500 milliseconds. That's it. All you got to do is set those environment variables right here inside your IDE and you're good to go. You can imagine that when you're doing an actual Docker call. So if you're doing Docker PS, sorry, Docker run, uh, you can do this. OK, so I think most people understand environment variables. Um, that is kind of the crux to how this all ends up working. But the fun part about what I ended up getting working here is that I have the if you probably can't see it because it's too small, but I have Docker for Windows, Docker for desktop currently in the Windows container mode, which means that I cannot just say Docker run uh, Redis. I can't just say start a, you know, boot a Redis container because Redis is a Linux service. I would have to switch this back over, right, to do a Linux container. And then in that case, I couldn't actually do any of the buildings and things that I want to do. Um, so in this little scenario, maybe you have a Windows service you also want to use. I'm trying to obviously show showcase how hybrid clusters work. Um, I'm just trying to show you that there's also this little fun thing uh, that hopefully everybody's starting to use, but Windows subsystem for Linux, I've installed the, um, I've installed the Ubuntu container, uh, the Ubuntu app, I guess is what they call it, which means I now have this, um, and you'll see here if I do this, I have, sure, um, I can do service status all. And I have already pre-installed this one uh, with Redis server. So that means I can just do service Redis server start. I now have a Redis server. Uh, do that. Cool. Let's just turn on a monitor so I can see what he's doing. And I'll make that bigger for you guys. 
And then we'll see what this application does, because since this is WSL, um, it will now expose this port to the host machine, 6379 is available. If I was on, say, PowerShell here, this is my local machine. So if I just do Redis CLI, because I installed it with chocolate earlier, you'll see if I do a key star, you'll see that my monitor shows up here inside of my Linux container. So I now have a Linux service running, and I have a uh, app here who uses and consumes that IP. Uh, and host in that port. So if I click run, let's see what my app does. So then we can see it working in Kubernetes later. So my app boots up and he's super boring. Uh, he basically sleeps for the amount of time given, 500 milliseconds. Uh, he randomly creates a key and a value to put into it. So he makes a key here and he puts the value here. Not very difficult. And if you're watching this, from the other perspective, which is from the perspective of the Redis server, you'll see here we have set X's and get X's. So I'm doing a set X with a, a five, a five second TTL. And then I'm doing a quick get to make sure that the value that was there is actually there. Not too complicated, but we'll very much show you how the networking works when I get this all up and running. So that is how you'd kind of do it if you're running locally. Um, questions on that, please feel free. And I'm going to switch over to getting this booted. All right, so here we are on cluster two. We currently have a very, very, very typical setup uh, for Windows, sorry, for Kubernetes in general from RKE. All this stuff is normal. Cattle systems, ingresses, uh, all this stuff is, is what, we, what we normally add here. Um, I'm going to make something new. So this is normal. We expect all these things. So I'm going to go ahead and go to projects namespaces. I'm going to add a new project, my app, doesn't matter what you call it. So a project lets you group namespaces within it. So I'm going to click on the project and I'm going to go to namespaces. I will add a new namespace, my app. I don't care about any of these other things. Okay, so what does my app need? Well, we just saw it, it needs Redis and it needs my code. So I'm going to wait for that to activate. And while we're doing that, I will go to apps. All right, this is the catalog. Um, the, the gist of this is Helm charts that we maintain. Um, and if we have it in here, normally it's one button deploy. Um, it's one button deploy on Linux boxes. So I'm about to show you how to make this guy uh, do exactly what you want for a hybrid cluster because it's actually not that hard, but it seems daunting at first. So if you remember, I said that we have taints, uh, which will make it so that um, this will boot on to the Linux, uh, sorry, the Windows node only. That obviously doesn't work with Redis. It is a Linux service. This is a Linux Helm chart. Um, if this was a Linux cluster, everything would be fine, but we need to shim this in. So first off, because I don't want to deal with it, I'm going to turn off master slave, turn off passwords, um, and I'm going to do cluster IP. This will all be fine. This part's perfect. This way I have a very open, um, I have a very open, um, uh, Redis, uh, Redis node, basically exactly how I have it here, where I can just type in Redis CLI. I mean, if you turn on passwords and slaves and stuff like that, it just makes this a little more complicated, but obviously when you guys go to production, you're going to want those things. I do not have my namespace here, so I'm actually going to go make sure my namespace activates because I kind of want it. Why is he not activated? Let's see if the UI is just not catching it. Ah, it is. All right. So again, uh, I'm still in my I'm still in my um, project. I am going to go launch from the catalog. Type in Redis search. There's the Redis chart. I will put it. Yeah. Oh, using existing. That's what I need to do. There we go. All right. So the critical piece here to the namespace. Uh, Flannel opens up um, the services to members of the same namespace. So you'll see how simple this is. If you get the namespaces right. If you do not, you will be struggling with why this thing is not connecting uh, and it can be very frustrating. So I'm going to tell you that this thing right here, uh, remember that. Cluster IP and Redis passwords, metrics, all good here. Okay, so here's the tricky part. Now, this is super typical, but how do you make it run on a uh, Linux box while it's in a hybrid OS cluster? Take a look here. First off, this is annoying. Use password false. Password that section comes through. 
for some reason, just deleting that. Okay, here's how you do a toleration. Very easy. This is what it looks like. It's a toleration. It's one of many. This is an array, and you're saying catalio slash OS Linux no schedule. This means that it can tolerate anything with that tape. I hope that makes sense. Now I have to do it here for the master. I'm going to do it for the slave, just because. But you don't. We don't need it in this setup. But let's just pretend. All right. Now I know for a fact this is going to break, and I want to show you how to fix it when it does because. It's not that complicated when you actually see what it's complaining about. So you'll see here we're in deploying, and you'll see here we're trying to make one Redis master, and you see here what image it's pulling. See here it's red, it's unavailable, and it's trying to create it. We click here, unavailable, Redis zero, Ubuntu guest. Yeah, there you go, it worked. Never mind, it actually targeted properly. Maybe my other cluster wasn't running properly. Okay, there you go. This is a container, so we have one pod with uh, Redis, this image. You can see the events, it's already container Redis, successfully pulled, very happy, very healthy. Um, what does that mean? Uh, this is the fun part about our UI and the fun part about Kubernetes in general. These are all containers, you can get into them. He's got no name, it's kind of a bummer, but you'll see here that I have uh, a nice shell access, which is very similar to what I had um, on the desktop. And you'll see here if I do a monitor, monitor is okay and you'll see we got some ping pong is going back and forth so i'm going to set this aside because now we have a monitor running and i want to show you my app connecting so we're going to go back to the ui i'll delete this stuff all right so we have redis master we have the app installed now, the thing that I'm going to want to launch is the workload. Now, how did I get here to actually have a workload? So first off, I put it in Docker Hub. That was the first part. So this piece right here, oh, where did he go? Oh, yeah, slash R. So this is my little app. I have already built this two hours ago. Um, I had to build it as per what we were talking about with drone earlier. I had to build it on an 1809 server because uh, this is an 1809 uh, Windows 2019 box that I'm running on. I can build it locally. And I'll show you how that works. I Since I have uh, Docker for desktop here, um, I will uh, all right. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it's in here. There he is. Okay, not too complicated. So that's an awesome character. Why don't I just, uh, whatever, good enough. Um, okay, so from, you'll see here, so from ASP uh, net 3.1, um, I'm copying in everything that was built. Uh, you can see that, uh, well, you know kind of how that works, I guess, when you build your project and mix your DLLs and EXEs and stuff like that. So I'm copying everything in. And then this uh, .NET, um, container contains the dot that exe and then i'm telling it to run my dll that's pretty much all my it is from my entry point it's not very complicated um and then the app itself is configured for environment variables so we're going to set those when we do this in rancher so here is a very happy uh, redis box uh, i will go back to the rancher ui and we will try to deploy this so we go to workloads we go to deploy I will call it .NET console app. I will choose Luther Munson. And again, critical, uh, make sure it's in the same namespace if you want to talk on the network. I do not have any port stuff I want to deal with. I can't really even do that very well with Windows. Um, I do, however, want to add environment variables. So if you remember, I had two. And I'm pretty sure it's this. And then I'm pretty sure it's sleep. And I will do 2500. Okay, so that was my configuration. Not too complicated. I'll hit launch. And we'll see what happens. Container is creating. And hopefully, if it boots, then we'll see some information over here. There you go. Look at that. It's already doing it. TEDx. Get and the get. So this is functional. 
and I can do additionally an execute shell. This is uh, actually the PowerShell uh, access. You do the same thing with the UI. Uh, you can get into the container and, um, and do whatever you want. Um, you can see here, here's my built app. You can see I have my runtimes all set up and I have my console DLL. That was what I did. If I wanted to run this again, I could do something like this, I believe. Console app.dll. And there you go. So the environment variables are inside of the container and I am inside of the container right now and you'll see that I didn't have to set any environment variables and it's already picking up my Redis configuration um, and my 2500 millisecond um, uh, TTL or sleep time. So I can control C that and you'll see that I now have only one running again. I'll get out of that. Um, this part might actually be pretty useful for some people too is that there's actually logs that we maintain because of Kubernetes comes through in the UI. And if you do your standard out logging properly, you can pull it all through the UI right here. And you can see exactly what's going on. You can watch uh, see a 6280 came across, you see a 6280 right here. You're watching the same thing in two windows, all through the Rancher UI. All right, so that's the gist of the demo. I'm not entirely certain I have much else to show. So I am going to close that, close that, ask for questions before we start wrapping this up. Um, so Luther, the catalog that you used, um, was it already available uh, in this Rancher version or did you have to go and load it? Oh, this is stock Rancher catalog. Um, yeah, I literally, uh, I mean, let's see, Rancher single net. This is all I did to get what you just saw here for Rancher? It was oh, just no. This. Uh, so for the Redis app that you launched, um, yeah. the catalog, yep. uh, it just comes inbuilt with Rancher 243. It does, right? So what? So that's my point is that I to get my Rancher node up, I just created a single node and the catalog comes pre-built. So it's already embedded inside of it. So everything that you see here under apps launch, this is all preloaded with with Rancher right out of the right out of the gate. Cool. Um, and uh, the version of Ubuntu that you used um for your nodes. Yes. Uh, what what was the version that you used? Um, I used 18.04, um, 2004, 20.04 is also out, but the Docker install is not complete yet. Um, so 18.04 tends to be pretty bulletproof. Um, I am going to stick with that for a little bit until until I know for sure that, I mean, even the, the getdocker.com, get.docker.io or whatever it is, this thing. Yeah, this guy, even this thing doesn't actually work fully on uh, on 20.04. Um, 20.04 is cool. I've had I've used it plenty of times, but uh, for bulletproof sort of, you know, demo stuff, I don't really want to risk it. And uh, I use 18.04. Yep. Uh, the containers, um, do they need to be in the same namespace? Like, yeah, that, that's that's kind of the critical piece if you want the networking to work out. It's it's you can do it if uh, you don't have them in the same namespace, but you have to do like the full the fully qualified DNS name to to make that work. It's a little bit harder. Um, I like to keep things nested in the same namespace so that it's nice and clean and easy. For instance, if you boot your app and he just has to connect to Redis dash master, like that's a lot easier than saying like cluster dot local dot whatever. So it's I I think it's cleaner to keep your app in the same namespace personally. Thank you. Um, would it be uh, like, do we have any plans to deploy the webhook service? So in order to make the Windows authentication work with GMSA accounts? Uh, yeah, so the GMSA stuff is like a work in progress. Um, and there's a lot of stuff going on there too from, from Microsoft side of things. I don't know if I can answer that question aptly, to be honest. Um, the there, the, for instance, I, I was working with one customer who was having issues even making that like connect and work. So I don't, I'm not sure I should talk much about GMSA today. Sorry. Okay. Um, and this is a big question I'm just going to read out loud. Uh, do we have a sample .NET framework app? That is the one that, re that required a built-in IIS or a web server instead of .NET core. 
Yeah, so I did a console app. Um, I'm a Go programmer, so it was a lot more easier for me to wrap my head around. Um, yeah, I've seen, I, I don't have a demo of that today, but frankly, it's the same thing. Like the, the, the .NET stuff with, uh, with the web servers uh, works. I've seen plenty of people do it, and I'm pretty sure there's a, dot, uh, a web example. Um, uh, I don't know, I'm not even going to search for it, because I'm probably um, going to look at completely else paths. <laughs> Yep. And do you think we have any head charts under Rancher catalog for these kind of de deployments? No. Um, I, you mean for which part? For um, um, for IIS web server deployments. Oh, so a lot of that actually gets embedded inside of the container. So um, no, uh, you, okay. you, you don't have to deal with it that much from a Helm perspective. The Helm perspective is going to deploy the container that you've rebuilt with a lot of that stuff in it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the, the dockerizing a dockerizing an app with IIS. Let me actually try to think. I had seen one that had done it pretty well. I let me let me dig for it while we're still asking questions. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing and go find something real quick. Maybe yeah. I can answer that question a little bit better while I'm answering other ones. And then a lot of those are around different things that we support for Windows cluster. So is Istio service mesh supported? How is the Hyper-V isolation support going? Do we have like um, a documentation that you can just point to where people can look for what all things are supported for Windows cluster? Um, great question. I think we need to really update those docs to be honest with you. Um, I don't know other than the Windows we have a, our, our docs has some stuff in it about Windows compatibility or enter Windows. I'm gonna try to get this and post it. So this is a great place to start. How do I post something in oh, here? Oh, you're not showing the screen anymore. What'd you say? Oh, I'm not, yeah, sorry. Let's go this one. Okay, so this is a good place to start. Kind of tells you the architecture. So this is uh, just to, here, just to make it life easy. Rancher Windows cluster, uh, and the first result is our docs. So. This guy, uh, as it says, from 2.3. A lot of the things that I talked about in this call are from, from, from here. Um, and then uh, this will tell you a lot of stuff that's supported. OK. Um, and there's another question about how many Windows worker nodes can be supported. I think it is similar to just a Rancher custom cluster, but just to confirm, is there a limit on them? No, it's exactly the same. Um, and did run so when you were deploying the app, did Rancher notice itself that it has to deploy this app container on the Windows worker? Yeah, so that's part of the the, the taint. So if you were to so let me share the screen again. I'll try to do just the this one. Okay, this, so hopefully you're seeing the Rancher UI. So that's part of the taint. Um, uh, go back here and notes. So you'll see here that this note is tainted. So uh, basically Kubernetes is going to look at that and say, you better know that you want something to be on that node if you want to schedule something on that node. So that means the default in this cluster is going to be the Windows node. So that's why when I deployed it, I didn't really have to select or choose anything. It just chose the Windows node automatically and put it there for me. Cool. I think that's all the questions that we have for now. All right. Um, cool. So let's wrap it up a little bit with uh, this PowerPoint presentation. And I do have a final slide. Uh, if I can share my screen properly. Okay. So. Here's the final slide. The final slide is apparently, here we go. So this is what we discussed. Grain clusters, local development, uh, containers and windows, hybrid OS cluster deployment, projects, namespaces, final networking, and the vSphere integration, which um, I actually wrote. So if anybody wants to talk about that, I'm open and available. Um, I got time. You guys are here, I'm here. If you have questions, feel free to ask them. Um, and additionally, if you're bored and want to reach out to me, you can find me on GitHub, find me on Slack, on the Rancher user Slack. I'm the only loop there. I guess this is a question for Connie. Um, when are we planning to uh, share the presentation? Because someone just missed the first part of it. 
Oh, yeah, we will uh, send a link to download the slides and also to the recording and follow up email probably within two days. Um, so the recording should be available uh, within the next day or so. Thank you. All right, well, if you don't have any questions, um, you know, thank you very much, Luther. This was uh, mm -hmm. great info here. And um, thank you all for attending. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, earlier on, we will not have a uh, a Kubernetes masterclass next week due to the Memorial Day holiday. And um, to check out all things Rancher, head over to rancher.com. Uh, you can download any of these, uh, try out, sorry, try out any of um, our products or projects shown here. And uh, I think that's it. Thank you all again for coming and we will share the recording and slides uh, via email.